Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video we're going to be talking about glaucoma. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe. Also check out ninjanerd.org, that's where we have our notes and illustrations for you to follow along with these lectures and really get that good study habit down and really learn these concepts. Let's get into this. So glaucoma is the increase in the interocular pressure, pressure or the IOP is what we can call it, and this causes damage to the optic nerve. So you're probably like, what the heck are you talking about? What's IOP? What's going on? So we know within the eyeball, we have a lot of different segments. We have places, and we're going to go through all this, but there's fluid within the eye. And fluid within the eye can increase in pressure, and in pressure on certain spots can create pressure onto the optic nerve. And I'll talk about it a little more. But that octave nerve pressure eventually can lead to damage and eventually cause problems with our vision and or vision loss. So what happens? We have aqueous humor. And when there is an increase in this aqueous humor in the front anterior segment of the eye, right? So anterior segment is here. We have anterior and posterior chamber. And what we're looking at here is this increase in aqueous humor. This aqueous humor volume increases. When there's a volume increase, much like the body with the blood, when there's an increase in volume, there is hypertension. We call this intraocular hypertension, which is an increase in the IOP and that pressure is typically greater than 21 milligram mercury. And what we're looking at is that damage to the optic nerve, because once this fluid over here increases, then we have pressure that pushes back, pushes back onto this optic nerve, and that can cause a vision disturbance and then eventually a vision loss, which is blindness. So let's go through and orient ourselves here again and talk through that so maybe we can get a little more understanding of what we're looking at. So we have our eyeball here, and we have the green outside here, which is our cornea, right? And then we have the blue, the dark blue here, which is our iris. We have the ciliary body. We have the lens, which is this big portion here. And then what we would have here is our pupil, which we can draw in just a little dotted line. Okay. And this is stuff we all are probably aware of and you know, understand what these structures are. And within this structure here, from the lens forward, is where we have our anterior segment meaning the front portion of the eye. And that anterior segment can be broken into two different portions. The anterior chamber, which is the portion in front of the iris, and the posterior chamber, which is the front, the part below the iris or in front of the lens. Okay, so if we want to draw a little line here, this is where our posterior and this is where our anterior chamber would be. And this is mostly where the glaucoma portion of this understanding of glaucoma comes into play. But the back portion of the eye, or the posterior segment, is also really important because we have the posterior segment, so the portion behind the lens, and this whole area is filled with vitreous humor. And fluid here and fluid here, as the, they move and bulge together, there's a problem if there's too much pressure pushing one another way. So if you picture this eyeball almost as like two balloons. There's one balloon in the front and one balloon in the back. And if one starts to fill up, it starts to push on the other one because it can't spread out this way. I mean, it could. Your eye could bolt out of your head. But typically what happens is it tries to keep the eyeball into your socket and it pushes back. And what happens when it pushes back? It pushes into that ocular nerve. So let's go through it again. Our optic nerve, sorry. So let's go through it again. We have the increase in the aqueous humor, which means here in the front, that increases our interocular pressure. That pressure then will push back onto our optic nerve and that can cause a vision disturbance or loss. So you're like, where is there increase in aqueous humor? How do we just get more humor or get more of this fluid within our eye? So we have a couple more structures we need to talk about. Here, right here, is what we call our trabecular meshwork. And our trabecular meshwork is this little like drain that is over top of our Schlem's canal. And our Schlem's canal is this canal opening that eventually goes in and drains, drains the fluid out of our eye and then eventually goes into circulation, right? It goes into our um, vascular circulation around the eyeball. And what we need to understand is our ciliary body, which is right here, starts to produce our aqueous humor. And our aqueous humor goes from our posterior chamber up through our anterior chamber, goes to drain through our trabecular meshwork, and out Schlem's canal. 
And we have to understand that when there is an input, right, so we have an input of fluid, we have the production, we have to have an equal output or drainage of that. So let's look at this one more time. We have a ciliary body. The ciliary body creates that aqueous fluid. And as it goes through the posterior chamber, through the pupil, into the anterior chamber, there is this place right here which we call the drainage angle. And that's really important for glaucoma. Drainage angle is where we get the names of the different types of glaucoma. So I want you to understand that this angle here, our lens, I mean, sorry, our iris and our cornea create an angle. And that angle will allow some fluid to flow through. And then the fluid goes through the trabecular meshwork and through Schlem's canal. And this right here is the flow of our aqueous humor, which is great, that's what we want. But with glaucoma, there is some sort of blockage or interruption of this flow, and that's where we get a buildup of pressure. So let's look at the differences between the primary open angle and the primary angle closure. Now, you're probably like, what? These are, these are big words, what do these words mean? So we have primary open angle, and then we have angle closure. So these are the words that I start to zone in on here and really hone in so I can remember in my head. Okay, we're talking about open angle. Now remember I said the drainage angle is where glaucoma comes into play, right, for the naming. So in open angle glaucoma, open angle, meaning this angle here is open. So there's not a problem with the angle in open angle. So this is nice, it's flowing, flowing right down in there. There's a lot of space the fluid can go into. The problem with open angle is the trabecular meshwork. So over time, this trabecular meshwork, this little drain that's over top of the canal, can get stiff and get clogged. And what happens is this fluid cannot drain out as fast or as rapidly as it wants to. So now you're thinking in your head, okay, I have lots of input, but no output. So because it's not draining out as fast as it wants to, there's an increase in the aqueous humor here. And because of it, there starts to press, right? Some pressure here and some pressure this way. And as that pressure pushes our lens, it causes more pressure back onto the retina and back onto the optic nerve. And that pressure here, as it presses the, presses the retina up against the optic nerve, it can create some visual disturbances. And with primary open angle, because it is the most common, it also happens a little more gradually. There's usually like a mild headache, maybe some mild eye pain, very, very, very mild. There's a loss of the peripheral vision, the halo around the lights, and then the increase of the interocular pressure. So what I want you to get from this is that open angle, primary open angle means the drainage angle is nice and open, it's allowing the fluid to drain, however, the trabecular meshwork is our problem because that's where our blockage is. So because of that, we're not draining our fluid out properly and we're increasing that interocular pressure. And that increase in the IOP is causing that pressure back onto our optic nerve. Now, let's go into our primary angle closure. So this one should already give you an idea on what the problem is. It's telling you angle closure or sometimes it's called narrow angle or narrow closure. All of these names are telling you what's wrong with it, that there is a narrowing of this angle. So if you look at this eye compared to this eye, this eye's got a lot of space, it's nice and open, right? So for a primary open angle, it looks kind of like this, right? And then we have our drainage here. But on the primary angle closure, it's a lot more narrow. And because of that, the fluid is having trouble getting into there. And this is typically an emergency. And you're probably like, well, what happens? So typically, the cause of this is either some type of an anatomical defect or some type of medication that the patient is taking. So this fluid, again, coming from the ciliary body, goes up through the pupil, goes through the trabecular meshwork, but because this angle is so tight and so narrow, it's having trouble flowing out. And again, we start having troubles with the fluid draining, so we start having pressure. Because of that pressure, we get pressure back 
along the nerves as well and along the retina. And this is a rapid onset. All of a sudden, they're like, I don't know, this eye pain, it came out of nowhere. Their pupils might be non-reactive to light. They're saying it's severe pain. It's severe. They may get some type of nausea or vomiting. Their eyes may be sensitive to light. And then edema, you can even see it maybe around the eye. And because of all this, this is an emergency. This means that we are getting such a rapid onset that we're having trouble draining out fluid at all. And now what's going on is we are creating back pressure onto that optic nerve and we may have some type of problem very quickly that is going to be permanent. So let's go in to talk about the assessment, the interventions and the patient education on how we can teach them about glaucoma. All right, Ninja Nerds, let's talk about our assessment of our patient. So when we talk about the primary open angle glaucoma or the primary acute closure glaucoma, there's a couple different discrepancies between the symptoms. Even though they're both glaucoma, there is still a obvious difference between some of the symptoms. And one of them is that open angle is typically painless, where angle closure is typically severe pain. So let's go through really quickly. Open angle, it's painless, it usually changes slowly over time, and it'll create some sort of tunnel vision. So these patients will get that tunneling, vi the tunnel vision, or that cloudiness from the peripherals into the central. So this is very classic open angle glaucoma, and the angle closure will typically be a blurry vision almost all over because that pressure is so sudden with that sudden eye pain that the, the eye cannot even show any type of image. It starts to just get a little fuzzy, a little hazy, a little blurry. And there will be some halos around the lights. What's the most important is to recognize, especially the open angle glaucoma right away. If you do have a patient, whether you go into the room to assess them for that shift, or they come into your ER and they're saying, I just have this really severe eye pain, you wanna make sure you're assessing them and getting onto them quickly and then letting their doctor know. Once then, the doctor will be able to do some sorts of visual assessments. Now, if you're going to your eye doctor regularly, which is very important, then you'll be able to get some of this stuff routinely at the eye doctor. Some of these tests can be done very um, routinely. So the first one we have is the visual assessment. The doc can view the optic nerve and they can look to see if there's any type of pressure on the nerve. You can also, as a nerve, do a peripheral visual assessment. It maybe there's something going on and you can check their peripheral vision. The other ones is if you've ever gone to the eye doctor and gotten this test done, you'll know as soon as I tell you this tonometry, tonometry, it's the measurement of the intraocular pressure. It's typically between 10 to 21 milligrade mercury. But I want you to understand is that this is the test when you go to the eye doctor where they puff the little puff in your eye. Um, I hate it every time I go. I'm, I'm like in the machine like this like because I know that puff's coming. But once it's done, you get to a measurement of your IOP and that's great. The other one is the gonioscopy, which is what they use to view the anterior chamber. And again, measure that drainage angle. Because remember, that was one of the defining characteristics between the open angle and the angle closure is the drainage angle. Okay. So what are we gonna do if we have a patient come in or we go into the patient's room and they're like, my eye is screaming, what's going on? So typically with that primary angle closure, it's an emergency and we wanna start administering medications that could hopefully decrease the interocular pressure. And then when it's deemed necessary, you may have to prepare the patient for surgery. Now, there may be instances where they're not gonna go for surgery that day, but hopefully we're able to get the interocular pressure under control so the damage isn't permanent and severe. So some of the choices for surgery are an iridotomy, which is the small holes that they poke into the iris, and that will help the aqueous humor flow and have a little more space and equally flow. They can also do the placement of a shunt which would go through the meshwork, the trochlear meshwork, and be able to help that fluid drain out. They can also get what we call the laser trabeculoplasty, or the SLT. What this is, is this is the uh, laser that goes in and causes damage to the drainage tissue, so the areas within that drainage angle. They can blast it with a laser and hopefully, you know, make it stop accumulating, kind of help it, the tissues to not block our drainage angle, but over time it's not permanent and eventually that angle will close back down. And then we have a trabeculectomy, which is where they take the trabricular meshwork, they remove it, and then you can actually see a bleb on your patient's eye. So if you don't know what a bleb is, you can definitely Google it. It's this like little 
um, whitened area. It's above the iris and you can see it under the eyelid. Um, and that's a pretty common side effect of the trabeculectomy. But remember, these are whether you want to get it for your open angle or your angle closure. I mean, your open angle or your angle closure because they can both work for either of them. There's just some that are a little more evasive and a little more strategic in the emergent setting. But we want to make sure that we are talking to our patient, the education of what we can do to either prevent it uh, before it becomes permanent. So first is the importance of the lifelong medications. If they were to have surgery or hopefully we can print it, prevent it prior, we want to give them certain medications like myotics, which can be constricting of the pupils, the carbonic and hydronase inhibitors, which will decrease the production of the aqueous humor, which again, if there's not as much input, then we don't have as much output to drain out. And then we also have beta blockers. And these can all typically be given through eye drops. So you want to make sure that your patient knows how to administer eye drops. We're using hand hygiene. We're not touching the tip to the eyeball. We're pulling down to expose our conjunct conjunctival sac and dropping the drops into that and then we are able to close our eye and move it around and we want to make sure that the patients know how to do those eye drops especially if they're possibly going to be doing lifelong medications and we also want them to make sure that they know that they need to keep up with it it's not today I'm going to do a little of this tomorrow I'm going to do a little of this because that eye pressure can build up we want to make sure that they're avoiding the anticholinergic medications. So a lot of your antihistamine or allergy medications can have these anticholinergics, which can also increase interocular pressure. You want to tell them to wear sunglasses or anything else that they can really help with their vision. So you don't want them straining with their vision. And avoiding any type of thing that will in increase the interocular pressure, like bending at the waist, coughing, coughing, straining, heavy lifting, things that will make their interocular pressure go up. So we want to make sure that we're keeping an eye on them, especially after surgery. This is really important because we don't want them to cause any type of perforation of the incision. We want that eye to heal nicely. We don't want them to lay on their operative side. And most importantly, they need to report to their healthcare provider if they have any lid swelling, bleeding, drainage, sharp, sudden pain, flashes of light. And big one here that the NCLEX like to hit on, the nausea and vomiting. If you have a patient that has a new glaucoma surgery and they are nausea and vomiting, they have both of those, you wanna make sure that you're picking this patient out of your prioritization because they have a chance to um, increase the interocular pressure and you can just easily help them with an antiemetic if you can give them an antiemetic because that can be controlled. The most important thing to prevention for this is their annual eye exams and if they do have surgery, also getting the interocular pressure measuring consistently. That way we're able to keep an eye on this patient and prevent it from becoming permanent because remember Glaucoma is a preventable disease that is painless, but it can be permanent when left untreated. All right, Ninja Nerds, in this video, we talked about glaucoma. I hope you liked it. I hope it made sense. If you did, hit a like down below and subscribe. And as always, until next time.